Hymn number 159, Blessed Be the Name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. All praise to Him who reigns above. In majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to do my opening reading from Psalms chapter 81, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> um, King James Bible. If you don't have a King James, grab a King James. Here we go. Bible says, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day, for this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not, I removed his shoulder from the burden, his hands were delivered from the pot. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee, I answered thee in the secret place of thunder, I proved thee at the waters of Mirbah. Salah. Word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. Sean Elvis. You know, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I apologize, but it's glad to be back. You know, it needs to be, the word of the God needs to be preached. Needs His name needs to be lifted up. So, uh, glad to see you. Um, you know, they say, with great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. So I want to ask you a question today. How powerful are you? And if you could gain more power, you know, what would you do with it? My sermon today is called God, Our Strength. God, Our Strength. In the opening verses that I read from Psalms, chapter 81, the Bible tells us to sing praises to the Lord. Verse 1 says, sing aloud unto God, our strength. The first time the Bible mentions singing praises to God is, is after God delivered the Israelites from the bondage of Egypt. You know, right after um, God used Moses to part the Red Sea and, and, they, and they, they went across dry land and then, and then the, uh, the Egyptians came after them and the sea swallowed them all up and Moses called for all, the, all of Israel to sing a song. And I'll just, I'm not going to sing the whole song, but I'll just read two short verses of the song. In Exodus chapter 15, you can go back and read uh, the whole song. But it's in just uh, verses 2 and 3, uh, they sang, The Lord is my strength and song, and He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare Him in a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt Him, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The Lord is my strength. That's what they sang. So I want to ask you a question today. Now, the first thing you have to do to understand how strong that you are is to find a way to measure your strength, right? Because how else do you determine how strong a person is um, unless you find a way to determine how do you measure strength, right? So, do you measure it by how much pain a person can endure? 
Is it how much weight that they can lift? What makes a person strong, you know? Why did the Israelites call God their strength? When I think about this topic of strength, I'm reminded of the ridiculous phrase, and, and I apologize, but according to feminist ideology, they all say, uh, we're strong, independent women, right? That, that's what the feminists refer to themselves as. It's supposed to represent a woman who can provide for herself, pay for her own bills, raise her children all by herself. You know, she's supposed to be glorified for this. And it's not enough just to call her independent, right? She can't just be independent. No, no. She has to be strong and independent. Now, now this isn't going to be an anti-feminist message. Um, I'm here to lift the name of God up. We're, we're uh, preaching the gospel. We're, we're, uh, we're lifting the name of Jesus today. But so, so to be fair, I'm going to also talk about the men, you know. There are a lot of men out there who try to compete to see who's the strongest. Who's the strongest man of us all? Who's the strongest man in the world? And usually, how do they do that? Who can lift the most weight, right? Oh, I'm so strong, I can lift all this weight, right? That will determine who's the strongest. Or, you know, maybe they'll go to war and they'll pit armies of men versus armies of other men to determine who's stronger, who's the stronger nation. Only the strong survive, right? Survival of the fittest. Well, today, I'm going to make the shocking confession to you, you know? <laughs> I'm going to confess today that I'm weak. I'm weak. Yeah, I said it, okay? But don't take that statement out of context, right? But, you know, it's so true because um, just this past month or so, you know, I, I, I fell victim to this injury, right? This injury that, you know, when I was younger, I, I probably would have not got it or I would have bounced back so fast. And But let me tell you, I learned that our bodies are weak. They're fragile. They're very fragile. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. I want to read a short scripture. Um, and, 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 and he said unto me, and this is Jesus. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I, rent, will, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When I am weak, then am I strong. You see, friends, if we really want to have strength, we need to understand first how weak that we are and where our strength should be coming from, where we should be striving to obtain our strength. And I'm not talking about going to the gym, right? Talking about going to church, talking about reading your Bible. You know, friends, our, our bodies are very fragile, right? We get we get sick, we get injured, we constantly need exercise, we need we need to eat the right foods and have the right nutrition and rest. And even if we do all these things and avoid injuries, we avoid diseases, our flesh will still someday perish and turn to dust. No matter how strong you can become, right? You can become the strongest, most independent woman that ever exist. And one day your flesh is going to turn back to dust. No matter how strong we become, you know, one day our muscles aren't going to be strong anymore. You know, no matter how beautiful you are as a woman, you know, one day your good looks are going to fade away. You know, so that's why it's foolish to rely on our strength, our own physical strength in our bodies. That's why the Israelites said, God is our strength. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So let me ask you something. Are you capable of doing everything? Can you do all things on your own power? According to the Bible, 
through Christ, we can do all things. But according to this world and man's wisdom, no, you can't do everything. There's certain things you cannot do. Excuse me. There's this other false teaching that I remember being taught as a child. That, Sean, you could do anything that you set your mind to, right? You ever heard that one? And, you know, just like they brainwashed all these young girls nowadays, right? Like, girls, you can do anything a man can do. You can do it all. But what are they leaving out? Christ. Through Christ, you can do all things. Their strength. God is our strength. You say, okay, Sean, I'll bite. I believe that God should be our strength, so how do we make God become our strength? How can I make the creator of the whole universe, the all-powerful, almighty God, become my strength? Well, how did Moses do it? How did the Israelites do it? They listened to God. First of all, they listened to him and they believed him. And they didn't just listen to him and hear what he had to say and believe that, yeah, yeah, that's right. They also did it. They did it. So they, they listened to him. They heard him. They believed it in their heart. And then they obeyed. They did what he said. So I think, you know, maybe that's a good start for us. You know, maybe that's what we should do. If we want to make God our strength, if we actually want to be strong, we need to open up our Bibles more. We need to read this book more. We need to at least listen to what God has to say. And we need to read it with a heart that says, I believe that. I believe that. And then we need to do it. Because it's not just enough to read it. It's not just enough to believe it. You have to do what it says. So when the Bible says to make God our strength, that only when you are weak are you strong. Do you believe that? Do you believe Jesus when he said, or excuse me, the Bible says in Philippians, right? Do you believe that you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you? Do you believe that? You see, we need to destroy our false idols. If we're going to be strong, we got to get rid of all the things that we think are going to make us strong that really aren't. Anything um, besides the Bible, besides God, outside of God is not going to make us strong, right? So if, you, if we think that, you know, going to work and making money, you know, that's going to make me stronger. I'm going to have more things. I'm going to be able to buy more. I'm going to be able to create an empire. Wrong. <laughs> We're wrong. If we think altering our body... You know, maybe going to the gym so we look better or, you know, uh, whatever the case may be is going to be uh, garner us more strength, more power or wrong. If you think going to school and learning all kinds of new skills and, and gaining new knowledge and you think that's going to make you strong. You're still wrong, you know, and don't get me wrong. These are all good examples of good things to do, right? I'm not telling you not to go do these things. I'm just telling you not to rely on these things for your strength. Our strength needs to be, um, needs to come from the Lord, right? We need to get the point in our faith where we say, hey, you know, it doesn't matter whatever situation that I'm in. You know, whether I lose my job or I, or I get injured on the job or I'm, I'm up to my, my neck in debt, right? Or maybe you're on your third divorce and you just can't get it right. Whatever the case is, nothing is impossible for God. The creator of the universe. The man who was crucified, died and was buried and rose again the third day. As long as we're bowing down to Him, we're obeying His commandments, we have fellowship with God, all things are possible. That's what He said. All things are possible. We make God our strength. 
Now, this isn't a prosperity message, right? Don't get it twisted. You know, God may not get us out of debt. You know, just because God saved the Israelites from the bondage of Egypt doesn't mean he's going to save us from uh, whatever we're going through, okay? He, he might have us going through a trial for a reason we, that we can't understand, right? But let me tell you this. If you truly believe Jesus' words, that his grace is sufficient for you, and you're truly thankful for it, and that's all you need is Christ's grace, and you're happy, and you're content in your heart with just that. And you're willing to do whatever it takes, you know, to put whatever trial comes your way and to still make God your strength, still make God your number one. Whatever happens, you know, just like Paul says, even if I die, it's gain. For me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. So even in death, death cannot stop our God. That's how powerful he is, right? He could even turn our own death into a miracle for his glory and resurrect us. And take us home to heaven. So let's examine ourselves today. That uh, that we're um, whether or not we're putting our we're relying on our strength to come from God or from ourselves, right? Because it should be coming from obeying God, right? Not from our own abilities. Remember, the Bible says God is my strength, and that's my message for the day, guys. You know, it's short, it's simple. Let's make God our strength, you know, because if God be for us, who could be against us, right? You know, and so um, I'm going to have a word of prayer, a quick word of prayer, and then I'm going to uh, close and let and let God have the last word over there. I'll, I'll uh, do a short reading from the Bible. So God bless you and have a great day. Um, yeah, well, I'll do that. Uh, the reading is going to be from John 15. Um, anyway, let's let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us understand how weak we are. Help us realize that without you, we can do nothing, Lord. We need to make your word our priority in our lives. We need to make preaching your gospel and, and your name a priority in our lives. Lord, please give us the spirit of joy when we do serve you and we do read your word, that it doesn't become a chore or something we don't like to do. And Lord, please hear our, our songs of praise when we, when we sing to you and understand that our heart is in the right place, even though maybe we can't hit the right notes, Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for reminding us of your great power that you showed the Israelites, our ancestors in Egypt. You're so powerful and strong, Lord, much, much stronger than us. Lord, I ask that you give the listeners of this message the ears to hear your, your message that I preach today of your strength and glory. And forgive us for many, any times that we may have not acknowledged your strength or maybe we tried to think that we were strong on our own, Lord. We're amazed at your power. We trust you, Lord. And we want you to be our strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So I'm going to do a reading from uh, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, um, verses 3 through 7. 3 through 7. And we'll give God the last word. God bless you guys. Have a great day. 15, 3 through 7. And these are the words of Christ. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done. 
unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen.